Harding, stutter steps, gets the Neal in the corner. Awkward spot for Neal, the five on the clock. Neal penetrates, kicks it out. Latrade to Arthur, gets it up, and it goes through. Wow, a shot you don't really expect to go in here. Bardos Amak on defense now. There's the rebound for the big fella. And here comes Blaze Neal directing traffic for the Wolverines. Neal drives, there's alley oop to Bardos with the one hand. Well, that's something we haven't seen from Amac. The Trace Arthur steps into another three, rattles that one home. Now Blaze Neal, outlet to Connor Harding. Step back three pointer for Harding. That one misses. Bardos Amac with the two hands. Thank you, Tim you got, Fuller. Yeah. Wolverines working the ball around the perimeter. Now in low to Fardaz Amak, who gets double teamed almost every possession. Fardaz Amak turns, puts it off the glass and in. Impressive move from Fardaz Amak. Blown rebound and a blown layup. Fast break opportunity for the Wolverines. Blaze Neal leads it, gonna go coast to coast and finishes at the net. And we're going to need a lot of that out of Blaze. Before he went across town to join BYU and Coach Pope, but he had a game high 19 points and then T.J. Washington added 16 as well. Tim Caesar, and he rattles that one through. Well, that's going to be big right there. Harding comes around the screen, now with 10 on the clock. Wolverines go down low to Fardaz Amak. Fardaz Amak, oh my! Beautiful. Talked about Utah Valley not having Trey Woodbury. Right now they don't have Jade McClanahan as well. There's another alley-oop! Big oh, man oh. to big man! Step into the three-pointer, that one too strong for the Pioneers. Here comes Harmon with the one-arm rebound. Harmon with the Euro step, trying to get the finger roll, but the putback is there from Bardas. Hey, what's good, everybody? Happy Monday to you all, wherever you may be. Welcome back to the program. Hope you had a good weekend. Uh, the Wolverines did. Those audio highlights were from Utah Valley's 82-48 to victory over NAIA foe Antelope Valley on Friday night. So we'll break that one down for you in just a little bit. But again, welcome back to the program. Uh, this is the UVU Coaches Show, and I'm your host, Brandon Crow. Thanks for dropping by. It's game day for Coach Mark Madsen's crew. Utah Valley is in Malibu right now as we speak, and they're getting ready to ride the wave of Pepperdine tonight as part of the SoCal Challenge. So you can listen to Jason Erickson and Jim McCullough, who they will both be on the call tonight for you right here on ESPN 960. You can also watch online via the WCC network. And again, tip-off is set for 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Tonight's game will be the first of two games this week for the Utah Valley Wolverines on the road in Southern California as they will hit the east side of the LBC on Wednesday night when they face Long Beach State. Got a great show for you today. Uh, we're going to hear from Coach Mark Madsen, as always. We're going to hear from Assistant Coach Todd Okeson. And we're also going to sit down and chat with two of the new faces for this Utah Valley squad, faces that Wolverine fans would like to get to know, hopefully. hopefully. But uh, we'll hear from Connor Harding, the BYU transfer, and we'll also hear from freshman Jordan Battle, who will join us as well. So last week, Utah Valley, they were 1-1, one one, starting the season off with a 76-56 to 56 loss at Boise State last Tuesday. And the Wolverines were without Trey Woodbury. And without guard Jade McClanahan, uh, Woodbury, who was on crutches Friday night, didn't even make the trip to the Gem State last Tuesday. And boy, was his absence felt in a big way. Now, we're unsure right now how long Woodbury is going to be out for. And the same goes for Jade McClanahan as well. But uh, we'll see how that goes. Now, last year, Fardaz Amac had the luxury of having uh, big fellas Evan Cole and Tim Fuller coming in and out fresh off the bench to help him out. Now, we will have... Uh, Tim Fuller still on this roster for Utah Valley, but no Evan Cole. And uh, we were able to see what exactly other teams across the country think of Fardaz Amac without that other post presence to help him out down low. Now, the Big Maple is still the Big Maple, and he's going to get Big Maple points because he's just a Big Maple, and that's what he does. And so uh, it was a little bit more difficult for Fardaz, though. And the Broncos gave us what I think is, is a sample size of what other teams are going to do around the country throughout the season. Now, Fardaz and the Wolverines, uh, they, they lost again, like we said, by 20 points. Fardaz had 15 points and finished with five boards. But Boise State really forced Utah Valley's other players to come off the bench and try to step up and make big plays. Now, unfortunately, not everybody did. Some players that we will break it down for you did step up. And one of those newcomers that did was Justin Harmon. So Harmon had a solid debut for Utah Valley. Scoring 14 points on six of nine shooting from the bench. The trade Darthur added eight points. Blaze Neal chipped in with five of his own plus four boards. 
But overall, Utah Valley shot 46% from the floor and 27% from deep. The Wolverines have struggled in the past with careless turnovers, and they gifted Boise State 21 points off of 18 turnovers. But like we said, it's just one game, and the boys were getting their feet wet and getting acclimated with each other in their new respective roles. Uh, and, but this was a great opportunity for other younger guys to step up. Again, we don't know how long Jade McClanahan is going to be out for. We do not know how long Trey Woodbury is going to be out for. But we do know that both of those guys – play vital roles when healthy in this offense and in this team and even on defense. So now uh, we're just going to see what happens going forward with this Utah Valley squad. And Friday gave us a good example of what we could see. Now, Friday night saw the Utah Valley Wolverines come together and do what we thought that they, that they were going to do and do frankly what they needed to do when they took apart NAIA foe and Low Valley final score 82 to 48. Now, the game started out a little sloppy in Utah Valley. It took a few minutes to get acclimated, but once they did, it was smooth sailing, and uh, again, Utah Valley came up big in that one. And, and of course, Big Maple, Fardaz, Amac coming up clutch, uh, like always, finishing off the night with 25 points and 15 rebounds, another double-double for the big guy, 11 of 14 from the floor, 3 of 4 from the free throw line, but again, Plaguing Utah Valley, which they need to clean up going forward, especially tonight against Pepperdine and Wednesday against Long Beach State. They had 23 turnovers against Antelope Valley, the NAIA foe. So in two games for Utah Valley to start things off, over 40 turnovers combined between the two, between the two games. That's not good. So again, that's one thing that Coach Mark Matson is is really trying to, to focus and to nail down before things get too out of hand. And, and again, without Jaden McClanahan, without Trey Woodbury, Utah Valley is needing to sure up all the the loose holes that they that they have. And uh, turnovers will definitely hurt your cause. So we'll sit down and talk with Head Coach Mark Matson in just a few minutes and get his take on on what he saw last week from this Utah Valley squad and what he expects this week from Pepperdine and from Long Beach. But a little bit about Pepperdine, and I know Pepperdine, for those especially on the West Coast, no Pepperdine is, is no uh, pushover in the West Coast Conference, and they've had story program and had their fair share of ups and downs like any other program. But you can always count on Pepperdine to give you a very, very good basketball game. So Pepperdine, they enter tonight's game with a one one overall record. The team is returning eight players, and they welcome seven newcomers to a team that went 15-12 and 12 last season and won the CBI tournament, that same CBI tournament that Coach Pope uh, took his, uh, this Utah Valley team to a couple of years ago. The Waves opened up the season with an 82-63 to 63 loss at Rice, and the team then opened its home slate on Friday night with a 65-60 narrow win over Idaho State. In that win over Idaho State, junior guard Jade Smith scored the game-high 17 points to go along with four assists and four rebounds. Junior forward Jan Zidek had 14 points, while graduate transfer forward Keith Fisher the, the third recorded a double-double with 13 points and 10 boards. Freshman guard Houston Mallett leads the team in scoring so far through the first two games as he averages close to 13 points a game, followed by Smith at about 11 and a half. So we'll see. What happens with this Utah Valley matchup with Pepperdine and how far does AMAC is able to grow and how this team's going to do? So, we're just getting started here on the Coaches Show. Again, we will hear from head coach Mark Madsen. This is the Utah Valley Coaches Show, and you're listening to ESPN 960. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to the UVU Coaches Show. Uh, Brandon Crow with you here. We are now joined by head coach Mark Madsen. Uh, coach, when was the last time that you were in Malibu? <laughs> it's been years, Brandon. It's been, it's been years. Uh, obviously, when, when I lived here, I, I came up here a few times for different things, but it, it's great to be back in California. Southern California became kind of a second home for me, and it's, it was really nice to land in LAX and, and just kind of have the warm weather, and it brought back some good memories. Excellent. Now, uh, I'm also from Southern California. Uh, have you ever taken Hannah to, to any restaurants there in Malibu? You know, there was a restaurant called Duke's and I oh, I'd never yes. actually you've been there. Yes. Yeah. It's a great spot. I never took Hannah there. We, we went to a lot of restaurants over in Santa Monica. Okay. Actually, actually a few in downtown LA, but we, we never made it up to Malibu. Okay. Now I, uh, are you going to have any, any former friends or players or anything come join you tonight at the game? 
Uh, yeah. So right now, tickets. We're working on the ticket situation right now, but uh, you know, been in touch with some people, and it's it's uh, you know, it's great to be in touch with friends and and get them out to a game. Awesome. Excellent. So coach, uh, officially the season started last week, uh, Boise state, obviously, uh, there was no Trey, uh, no Jaden during that game, but, uh, what were some of the positives that you took away from, from that game against the Broncos last week? Well, I think there were a lot of positives. I think from a defensive standpoint, we guarded their actions pretty well. We, we were able to kind of frustrate them in that way. We, we rolled out a little bit of a zone defense late just to try to break up the rhythm. But, but I was really happy with Justin Harmon. He got onto the court, made tremendous plays, brought energy, um, you know, played both sides of the ball and, and was a spark. Um, Jordan Battle, a young player, you know, we threw him right into the fire and he did well. You know, Jordan knocked down a shot, uh, got a steal, played good, solid man to man and off ball defense. So a lot of positives in that game. Now, one thing, uh, you know, Farndaz, does, obviously he, he came away with, with double digit points, but uh, you can already see the growth just in the two games for Farndaz does. Cause he knows he's not going to have an Evan Cole down low with him this year. And so teams are going to be double teaming him, and, and we've already seen his ability to, to pass out of that. Uh, is that some, something that you guys were working on with him in the offseason a lot? Well, yeah. I mean, da- Das number one, Das is such a worker. I mean, he, he has worked in, to really modify and transform his body. He works on his skills constantly. He's in the gym working on his jump hook, which is already phenomenal, mm-hmm. extending out his game to the three-point line. And so, um, yeah, we know that Doss will receive double, double teams and at times triple teams this year. And he's, he's done a nice job passing out of it. He had some great passes in the Antelope Valley game and, and uh, as well as in the closed scrimmages. So, uh, okay, you, you led us into to Friday night. Friday night coming away with the 82-48 to 48 victory. Uh, I mentioned this on the broadcast, but it was a little sloppy at, at the very beginning. And then you called a timeout and you really pulled the guys in, got them focused. Uh, what was that, that meeting like for that, during that timeout? Well, I think there was one situation in transition defense where we didn't communicate the way I wanted us to communicate. Yeah. Um, you know, as a head coach, I'm always okay with uh, certain things happening on the court. You, you know, occasionally a player is going to miss a layup. You know, the three pointers that we shoot will sometimes go in and out, but the things that are controllable communication, box outs, running sets properly, we need to control those and do a great job on it. Uh, again, Fardon's with another double double, but other players that stood out uh, to me, we, we know how consistent and uh, how fantastic Latre Darthard is. Uh, but Colby Lafson, he he came alive, and I think that was his coming out party, and that was the Colby that we all thought we were gonna we we're gonna see, and maybe uh, just maybe some growing pains last season. But uh, Colby's growth has been phenomenal so far. Well, you know, Colby last year he he really hadn't played a whole lot of basketball for for years. The the mission, mm. um, he he had played. I mean, practice, open gyms, but but in terms of game experience, it had just been a little while since he had had a lot of game experience, and so. He's got more and more live game experience and he's doing better and better. Colby went in there six for eight from three found his spots and uh, did a really nice job out there. So uh, coach tonight kicks off the SoCal challenge with Pepperdine. Then he got Long Beach state on Wednesday, uh, followed by some other games next week. Mm-hmm. How, uh, how important it was it for Utah Valley to be a part of this, this SoCal challenge? Well, I think it's, it's huge for us. Um, obviously we recruit California heavily. So to be here geographically allows us to, you know, kind of show the recruits and the families that, that we we're, we're committed to um, certain areas and w- where we have deep relationships, number one. And n- number two, the level of competition that we'll be facing is high. It's a high level co- uh, uh, competitive field, which I think will only help us as we go further and further in the season. Based off of what you've seen from your squad for the first two games, coach, and then uh, obviously game planning for Pepperdine, what are you expecting tonight? Well, I think that um, it'll be a physical game. We know that there will be defensive pressure, which we need to be prepared for, and we are. And I think that Lorenzo Romar, he runs, you know, some great actions out of the 1-4 high, out of the UCLA action, as it's commonly called amongst coaches. And he got that from um, probably Jim Herrick um, in their time at UCLA. And so, it's a very well coached team. Uh, we're excited to go out there and, and uh, have an opportunity to hopefully win the game. Thanks as always for taking the time coach. I know you're busy. Good luck tonight. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk with you later. Brandon. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon. All right. That was head coach Mark Madsen. We'll be right back with more on the UV coaches show after this.
Welcome back to the UVU Coaches Show. Uh, Brandon Crow with you here. We just heard from head coach Mark Matson. Now it is our turn to hear from Utah Valley's TO, not to be mistaken with Terrell Owens, but assistant coach Todd Okison. Coach TO, how are you doing? Doing well. Doing well. Thanks for having me. Now, uh, for the viewers who might not be able to watch this, uh, they're just listening to it, but you have a fantastic, what is that, a, a turquoise shirt on? <laughs> uh, great question. I don't know what color this is, but it, it, it looks good. I'll take it. Is that, uh, is that it's probably the same color as the, the ocean in Hawaii when you were out there, right? <laughs> yeah, real, real close. Real close. <laughs> aqua. I think, it's, I think it's aqua. Aqua. Okay, I'll go with that. Uh, coach, first off, how was the how was the off season for you and the family? Uh, off season was good. Um, you know, we we uh, we spent a lot of time with COVID, obviously. Um, you know, a, a, as a family, so that that was that was a blessing in disguise. So you know, the off season was about getting back to camps. You know, for the kids and and, and being out there with uh, you, you know with the sport camps and, and whatnot, some science camps. I know UVU has great camps for kids, so they're always they're always trying to find something to do. Now, uh, growing up in Kansas, coach, I know basketball you know took over later in your life, but did you play any other sports as well? Yeah, so I played a little bit of football, eight man football. Okay. Uh, yeah, eight man football out there in the you know in 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 Kansas, Western Kansas, and then uh, basketball in the winter and track and field uh, during the spring. Okay, what were your events in track and field? So I did all the jumps actually. I did a, I was a long jump, triple jump, high jump, and then I was on uh, four by eight hundred. Okay, so ever since a young age, you had the bunnies. Yeah, <laughs> I guess I was. A, I don't know how, but you know I could jump only off one leg though, only off my left leg. <laughs> So now that now that you you know are a dad and your your kids are growing up, are you getting them involved with different sports as well? Yeah, we do. So we uh, my oldest um, is a boy. His name's Gaines, and he uh, he does everything. He 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 loves all sports. I think he he does sports for the maybe the social aspect, you okay. know, more than anything. He likes to be part of a team, which is great, sure. you know, which is great. He gets to hang out with his friends. So he does basketball, soccer, baseball uh just about anything we you know swimming just about anything we can get them into um uh, and then my two little ones they do dance tumbling you know two girls uh eight and four or eight and three about to be four they do dance tumbling you know soccer so yeah they, they do everything all sports so now are you picking up on some of that lingo or are the girls having you dress up in tutus and stuff helping them with their form <laughs> or what Hey, I'm just I, I'm just lucky enough to be able to drop them off sometimes and pick them up. That's you know with, with our schedule, so you know if we can if we can uh, you know if we can at least get them to and fro, you know, then I've done my job. So I don't I kind of stay out of their way. That's a, that's out of my realm. What was growing up in Kansas like? Uh, you know, looking back on it, you know, I guess at the time you don't know any different. You know, sure. uh, you know, looking back. It's, you know, um, you're pretty isolated, you know, out there in Western Kansas. There's not a lot of, you don't, you're, you're not going a lot of places. There's not a lot of airports close by, you know, if you're really going to travel, you, it's a, it, it's a, it's an actual trip. You know, there's not like a day trip. There's not, I mean, you're, you're, you're leaving for a while. Um, but, but it was great. It's, you know, it's slow moving, um, you know, not a lot to do, but, you know, not a lot of trouble to get into. So, you know, you find your, you find your, find your way around, but a lot of work, you know, out there in Western Kansas, if you're not working then you're pretty bored, you know, that's all there is. You, you got to get on the tractor. You got to, you got to do something. You got to do something. That's the most fun you can have is go, going to work on the farm. What, what was, okay. You brought the farm, but what was, what was the thing that you had to do? What was, if your parents said, okay, Todd, this is your responsibility on the farm. What was your responsibility? Well, my parents are smarter than that. I didn't have any responsibilities. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I, I mean, it was different day to day. There was probably, you know, I was, I was the, you know, I was always the guy that had to mow the grass or, or mow the churchyard. I was always that guy, um, you know, but, but that wasn't a, wasn't a, you know, a, a, a definite Todd, you got to do this every single day. There wasn't, there, there wasn't that there's so much things to do and, and different things somebody needed a hand you know I was always the guy that you know I maybe wasn't in charge of anything but I was always the guy helping with everything you know got it yep. so do you feel like uh, being on the farm with with that discipline that you had growing up uh, did, did that carry over into into the basketball side to help you out 
Yeah, I think it did. I think it, it, it also, you know, the, 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 the discipline and the toughness, um, just showing up every single day, you know, whether, you know, in, in different forms, you know, in different forms. So, you know, if, the, if it's raining, if it's snowing, if it's what you still, you still had to work outside, you know, it wasn't like, oh, well, you know, nothing to do today. Thank goodness. No, there was always something to do. So I think toughness and just, you know, not, not, not quitting, you know, staying, staying, um, you know, staying focused or, or, or staying as, as one group, if you're working in a, you know, working in a team and not, and not quitting and just, you, you do it till the job's done. You know, you don't, you, you don't, you don't get any breaks or anything like that. You just work till the job's done. And then, and then you move on and do the next thing. Mm. So I kind of, took, I think, I think I took the, 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 the work, the work ethic from the farm more than, more than anything else. Awesome. Yep. So now, Coach, uh, throwing it back for you, back in 04 when you went to the Sweet 16 with, with Nevada, uh, just break, just going through, you took down Michigan State and you played against uh, Shannon Brown, Gonzaga, you played against Morris and Turioff, and then uh, Jared Jack at Georgia Tech. Who among those players, or even others that I didn't mention, but who do you feel like when you were playing was some of the hardest players or the hardest to guard? Uh, so earlier in the season, that season, um, they, they started a thing called the preseason NIT. Do you, mm. do you remember that preseason yeah. NIT we had? And, and you, it was a, it was actual at, at, at sites. So it was at home events. So we, we actually went to Connecticut in 2003. So the fall of 2000, in 2003, probably November, probably around this time. Um, they had a guy by the name of Ben Gordon. Oh yeah. He, he could put the ball in the basket at a high rate. <laughs> um, you know, we lost, 12, 13 to the, you know, they were actually the eventual national champions that year. Um, and uh, you mentioned um, Jared Jack, Georgia Tech actually finished second mm. that year. So Ben Gordon probably had 35 against us. He didn't play, he, you know, it was a close game. So, I mean, they needed all 35, but he, he was in foul trouble. He probably could have had 55, you know, he, he was a little bit of foul trouble. So he was probably the hardest, you know, thank goodness I didn't have to guard him. Maybe he would have had 70, but but we didn't have anybody that could guard him that night. He was, he, he was, it, it seemed to be corner threes. If I, if I remember right, he was, he was getting loose in the corner, running the baseline and, and we had nothing for that. When was the first time that you had heard of Mark Madsen? Uh, dude, I probably watched him, you know, probably, you know, probably the championship days with the, with the Lakers is probably the first time I've heard about him, um, you know, or learned of him and probably was a, you know, I uh, probably, you know, was a fan of his just, just from the, just for the aspect of maybe he should have been there, you know, mm -hmm. with this, you know, obviously he had the size, you know, but to be, to be in a league, um, to be, be playing at a league where he was playing in the NBA with, with, you know, you, you don't want to say limited athleticism, but he wasn't, you know, he wasn't a freak athlete by any means, but being able to, you know, just play hard and, and, and toughness, you know, got him on the court, got him on the team. Uh, now, and obviously he wasn't a bad player too, but, you know, his work, work ethic and, and, and being able to do maybe the dirty work, you know, on the side. Um, so I would say probably you're in the probably 08, you know, Lakers around in there, you know, those days is when I first, first heard of him. Okay. Now, how did, how did the connection to bring you over to Utah about, how did that happen? So we actually have a, a, a mutual contact um the guy that coached me trent johnson at uh, the university of nevada actually coached mark madsen at stanford as an assistant he was assistant at stanford uh -huh. um, um under uh mike montgomery uh, was a head coach there um at stanford and trent johnson was the assistant coach and then trent johnson got the the, the head job at nevada three four years into the gig um i showed up at nevada and yeah so that that's that that was the connect Gotcha. Now, what do you feel like uh, you've learned the most so far here at Utah Valley? Wow. I've learned a lot, actually. I've learned probably the most about um, just looking. He has a different lens. He's seen a lot of, I've seen a lot of basketball, but nothing compared to, you know, Coach Madsen. Um, he looks at different things um, in different ways than I do. He He's really um into the numbers and crunching numbers and he's just you know he's smart um obviously that goes without saying but he he looks he looks at different things sometimes i'm, I'm worried about the play and, and and you know what are they doing during the play and he's worried about the result like i don't care what they did in the play what happened at the end you know so i think just 
just diving deeper into, into, you know, I think I'm, I'm just scratching the surface of, you know, he's kind of opened up, opened up new avenues to how, how I look at the game now, just from the analytic standpoint, which he brought from the NBA and, and crunching the numbers every game, every timeout and seeing how we can get better other than just, you know what, guys, we got to make more shots or, or we got to set better screens. There's actual, you know, there's actual numbers behind, you know, things that we need to do. And he's, he's, he's brought that to, to, to my attention. So I'd say, I'd say the analytic side and, and uh, you know, crunching the numbers. Um, I've, I've never been into that. I, I never really believed in it. Uh, but, you know, year three, he's, he's got me, he, you know, he, he's got me thinking about numbers <laughs> more than, more than anything else. Well, I think, I, I don't know. I'm I, so my sport growing up was, was baseball. And, and you hear that nationally, especially after the world series about, you know, the, the analytics and the numbers coming in uh, to the baseball realm, but they, they do have a place, they have a purpose. And, and if you can use them correctly, then I feel like, you know, most definitely you can, you can use the eyes and you can see whether or not a guy can, still has it out there, but you can also use the, the numbers to pair up together. Um, and so far, Two games under the belt. Uh, you got Pepperdine tonight. Uh, what are you expecting from from Pepperdine for this game for the Utah Valley Wolverines? Uh, I expect Pepperdine to 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 start relatively fast. They they've been starting fast in the, in the previous couple games. Um, they love to rebound and get out in transition. So they want to you know they want to run fast. Um, you know they're 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 working on defense and trying to get stops you know from from watching their games they're getting better from the rice game to the idaho state game um just assignment sound and they want to rebound and they want to push the ball so i expect us to you know to have, to, to be in for a, a battle and being for a battle from the from the jump from the jump ball i think it's going to be i think you know they want to get up and down we don't mind getting up and down too so you know could be could be a down and you know a down and back game um um, but but again, we, we're, we're going to have to rebound and 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 uh, and get back in transition for sure. All right. Well, Coach, uh, thank you for taking the time. As always, appreciate it, and good luck uh, against the Waves, and then also on Wednesday against Long Beach State. All right, I appreciate it. All right, that was assistant coach Todd Okison. We'll be right back with more here on the, on the UVU Coaches Show after this. Welcome back to the UVU Coaches Show. Brandon Crow with you here on ESPN 960. We heard from head coach Mark Manson. We just also heard from assistant coach Todd Okison. Now it is our pleasure to be joined by Blaze Neald. Blaze, uh, how are you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing well. Uh, love the hair. Growing it out. Uh, who, who is this a challenge? Is this something you just wanted to do? It's just something I wanted to do. I don't know why, but I just started growing my hair out in the middle of last year. And I've never had it this long, so I just want to keep going and see what I can do with it. Are you going to have a challenge between you and Latre? <sighs> Maybe. Latre's <laughs> really long now. His is braided, but if if mine was braided, it'd be pretty long too. So, right on, man. Well, uh, we'll we'll talk uh, about the, the team and everything uh, a little bit down the road. But just want to kind of get to know you a little bit for the Utah Valley fans. Uh, really, where did uh, your love of basketball come from? Um, I think it just came from like my competitiveness uh, when I was growing up. Like I just I loved all sports, uh, mainly football when I was growing up in the beginning. But then I to love basketball and just playing the game playing with my friends just trying to go out there and win at everything and so I just became really good at basketball and that's what I want to stick with and I just loved it ever since I first started playing uh was there a certain player that really helped you fall in love with it somebody you watched at like the next level yeah I, I looked up to when I was growing up like Allen Iverson because he was kind of smaller okay so I, I liked like D Wade that's sure. where I like started to wear number three from and then oh when okay up, when I was growing up uh D will was the big point guard out here in Utah. And so Got I really it. liked him. And so I looked up to him as well. Now, uh, have you ever had an opportunity to, to meet any of those players, Darren Williams or anybody? Um, I think I met D will once. And then like, uh, one of my mom, her friends was like an assistant coach on the Grizzlies. And so when, uh, Alan Iverson signed at the Grizzlies, I got like, she got me like an autograph poster by him. No Even way. For like a week. Yeah. I still have it. So. That's 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 some rare stuff, man. And Allen Iverson, Memphis, uh, Memphis Grizzlies. Yeah, no way, <laughs> crazy. Uh, so, what was it about about those players that that really drew you in? Uh, I just like the way they played. Like Allen Iverson being a smaller point guard and just going out there and getting buckets, like was something I looked up to, obviously. And then D Wade, just like the athleticism and the flash and like how smooth he was on the court was super cool. And then D Will is just, 
I don't know, like I, I was a jazz fan because I was living in Utah at the time. And so obviously like I, they were super good and just watching D will with the crossovers and the way the jazz were playing back then, it was super fun. So now have, have you heard any, any stories about D Wade or Allen Iverson from, from head coach, Mark Madsen? Uh, not yet, but I know that when, uh, they played the 76ers in the finals and AI hit that, that step back shot and stepped over Ty Lue, coach Madsen was yelling at him right there <laughs> on the bench. So that's yep. pretty funny. every time I see that video now, I see coach Madsen yelling at him. So when, when did you first hear about Coach Madsen or know of Coach Madsen? Um, good question. I heard about him, like, when he first got the job at UVU. Um, and then, like, obviously, like, people had talked about him. And I heard about him, like, at his days at Stanford and stuff. And then um, I really, like, was able to figure out, like, watch some tape and see, like, oh, yeah, Coach Madsen was that guy. And just hearing everyone talk about him. And so probably, like, I don't know, maybe around my freshman year. Okay. All right. Now, uh, have you always lived in Utah? Um, no, I was born in Denver, but I uh, moved to Utah when I was pretty young and I moved around a few places in Utah, but yeah, I've, I've lived in Utah pretty much since like fourth grade. Okay. Now, um, I feel like not very many people think this or know this, but, but the, the basketball culture, uh, top down in the state of Utah is very underrated. I feel like a lot of, a lot of good basketball players in the state, specifically high school, uh, at the high school level and what was it like you know, playing um, amongst the guys that you played with and against at the high school level here in Utah yeah no I that's a big thing for sure I'd say Utah is very underrated especially like when I was in high school and stuff we had a lot of top 100 guys and obviously like uh, Frank Jackson Yoli Childs guys like those and um, it was super competitive and super fun and I always liked that because a lot of people like when we were playing AU we go to tournaments and they'd be like oh like this team from Salt Lake like we're gonna run them and and then we go out there and beat them by 40 and stuff. And so that was always super fun to go out and play like all these schools from California and different things and just be able to like compete and show that like, even though we're from Utah, like we still got a game and we can compete with anybody. So you, you went to BYU and then what was, what was it like with the experience in, in making that choice to come to UVU? Yeah. I mean, it was a, I had a super fun time at BYU and we were a super great team. And like, I learned a lot. It was like my first time playing D1 basketball and everything. And, and then I decided uh, I had to kind of make a choice if I want to stay there and continue my career at BYU and kind of ride it out or decide like to transfer maybe and look, take my talents elsewhere. And so I kind of talked to the coaches, kind of like came up with a plan of whatever I wanted to do. Um, and then I decided to put my name in the transfer portal. And then like within five minutes, I was getting offers and calls again, uh, just like previously before I had been recruited to BYU. And so eventually I decided that uh, UVU would kind of fit me better. And that's why I decided to make the choice to transfer over. Was that a hard decision to leave BYU? Yeah, it was, it was really hard. Uh, obviously like BYU is like, kind of like was where I kind of started, I guess you'd say and in my process. And so like, I learned a lot. It's where I grew up and everything. And I always had wanted to be a like BYU basketball player when I was growing up or football player at the time when I was super younger. And so it was kind of like my dream school. And then like to be able to live that reality and then to kind of realize that maybe I should take my talents elsewhere and maybe try something new that maybe pushed me out of my comfort zone a little bit, but in the long run, it'd be better for me as well. Now, what was it like meeting Coach Matz and talking with him about coming to Utah Valley and, and him talking about the possibilities of what your career could be here? That was super awesome. Like Coach Matz is like super great guy and obviously knows a lot about the game and been a lot, around a lot of great players. And so just being able to like, listen to him and some of the stories he's told and everything. And just like the way, like he expressed confidence in me, uh, just made me feel like safe and welcome and invited and um, someone that I want to be around and learn from and kind of pick his brain as well. And so it's kind of like a no brainer for me to listen to coach Madsen and trust him and uh, write it out and see what we can do. Now I I've been to my fair share of practices. Um, I sit above on the perch uh, with the guys that, that record practices. I haven't seen this personally. I want to ask you, does, does coach Matson ever just bust out like in, into Hey guys, this one time when I was playing, you know, against so-and-so blah, blah, blah. Does he ever bust down to into any of those stories mid practice? Yeah, actually, yeah, he actually does all the time. Randomly we'll hear like um, certain stories and stuff from things that have happened in his career. I'll give you an example. Uh, we gave up like a free throw line box out in a game and coach Madison was talking to us about uh, his first game in the NBA or something. He gave up a free throw line box out <laughs> and he got uh, actually tip dunked on. And he was like talking about how his coach talked to him about how if he just holds on, like they'll never experience that again, just like different things like that. And so 
he was able to share that story with us and it's super cool like sometimes we'll randomly talk about like his time with the lakers like phil jackson said this or kobe did this Shaq did this and so just like hearing those stories is also super cool did he say who dunked on him i can't remember the name but he he knows he knows the name. <laughs> i've heard the story a few times this is it ever surreal for you to to now that you've known him that you're there with practice and you know he he might be joking around and you're like my goofy coach that wait that's the same guy <laughs> yeah no it is it is definitely surreal especially because like now he's like not in player mode I guess you'd say so he's not the mad dog you could say he's not out there trying to rip heads off and everything he's a more experienced wise mad dog so super cool okay tr- true or false Mark Madsen can still dunk true we make him do it every once in a while do you really <laughs> yeah I think about like a week or so uh we were like dunk it coach and then and then he did it so he can now still- did he dunk it in Crocs yes did he really yeah oh man see that's something that that you know whatever happens you can just not every coach not every collegiate player can say you know what my coach can dunk in crocs so (laughs) so you you have that but um blaze so far the season's very young but what do you feel like um you have been able to learn about yourself about your game so far uh at your time at uvu to where you are now Uh, i feel like i can do a good job like holding guys together uh, helping get other people involved and like kind of spreading the ball. And uh, I think like I'm evolving also this year and trying to learn like what, whatever it takes to do to win. Um, last year, I may have had a different role than this year. And so just like trying to figure out exactly what we need to do collectively to come together and get to where we want to be at the end of the season. And like, we understand it's a process last year at the beginning, it was a little rocky as well, but by mm-hmm. then we figured it out and we had every like everything rolling. And so we're just trying to get better every day and every game and, um, hopefully by the by conference and by the end of the season we'll be exactly where we want to be excellent all right blaze i know your time is precious i'll uh, we'll leave you with this last question heading into pepperdine tonight and then long beach state this week what are the keys to success for utah valley this week um i think we need to really focus on team defense um, sitting in our gaps helping everyone out getting back in transition and then also just kind of like last game sharing the ball flying around getting assist doing the right things running our plays and offense and we'll get easy buckets and i think we'll be able to come out victorious so excellent hope so thanks blaze for taking the time man appreciate it yep thank you all right that was blaze kneeled and we'll take a quick break and we'll be right back with more on the ub coaches show after this Thank you again for joining us here on ESPN 960. Welcome back to the UVU Coaches Show. Brandon Crow with you here. We've had some great interviews from head coach Mark Madsen, assistant coach Todd Okison. We just heard from Blaze Neal. Now we're going to wrap things up with, with JB. Not to be confused with Justin Bieber, but the JB, Jordan Battle here for Utah Valley. JB, how you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So do you, do you mind being called JB? Of course. Yes, sir. <laughs> is, that, is, is that your favorite nickname that people call you? Yeah, that's that's the norm. That's the one everybody gives me. Okay. So I, I talked to Blaze about his hair. I wanted to see if he was going to have a competition with Latrey. Uh, mm-hmm. They're going to grow something out. I, I think you have the best facial hair on the team, hands down. Um, I mean, I've, I've had talks, talks about, I've heard it, heard it from a few people that they said that. <laughs> it's not the first time I heard that. Is that, is that something you take pride in? Of course, yes. Look good, I feel look, good? Yeah, you look good, you feel good, always. Okay. You look good. You play good. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> so now, uh, JB, you come in all the way from from VA. Is that right? Yes, sir. So, what was that like growing up in VA in Virginia? Um, it's nice actually. I mean, like the weather is the same. It's kind of like Utah, but a little faster, I would say. Okay. And some types and some terms, like it's very competitive, like the uh, sports wise down there and things like that. Every I wouldn't say it's not as people down there are not as friendly as the people down here in Utah. Okay. Now, uh, Virginia, that's still considered the South, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, I every every player from the South on and coach, I talked to, to Jared Jackson about this. Uh, talked to a couple of players, but uh, what is your favorite Southern food? My favorite Southern food would have to be fried chicken. Fried chicken. <laughs> I do fried chicken. Sorry, I love fried chicken. Okay, so so Blay, uh, I just uh, I just learned. What was that? Like a couple of weeks back, 
I just learned how to cook it a couple weeks back, so I'm good you, to go you, now. You can cook it now. Yeah, yeah, definitely had to figure that out. Okay, might have to drop by your apartment and uh, and bring Latrey because Latrey said that was his favorite thing too. Hey, stop by anytime. I got you. <laughs> so now you have fried chicken. Your favorite side dish with that macaroni and cheese. That's exactly what Latrey said. You guys know about this? Easy. It's easy. <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> Okay, now I, I asked Latre the best fried chicken place here in Utah. He said Popeye's was essentially the only thing that was out here. What's your take? Around here in Utah? In Utah, yeah. Uh, actually, I haven't really seen a lot of or been to a lot of a good fried chicken places around here. I'd probably say Jordan's Kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> we should make that a thing. So yeah, when you, when you start cooking those defenders, Jordan's Kitchen, I'll, I'll make sure to put that on the broadcast. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, uh, Jordan, where did your love of basketball come from? My love of basketball probably came from my dad because my dad used to play. And, like, he taught me the game and all of that. Now, uh, was, was he a military man? No, nah, but my grandfather is. His grandfather. Father. Okay. And uh, you went to a military academy, correct? Yes, sir. So what were some of the things that you learned in that military academy that you feel like have probably helped you out on the basketball court? Being on time, respecting others, uh, picking other people up, like when people down, because like we were around the same people every day. So like you got to treat them almost as if they're your brothers and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. Had to make your bed up every morning. So <laughs> that was the norm. So my bed, my bed is crispy every day. Crispy, love it. Now, uh, JP, what's what's in your playlist? Getting you, uh, getting you pumped up for the games. In my playlist, I have I have a variety of people. So I got J Cole, Kendrick, okay. Little Baby, Young Nudie, and then I throw in some R and B artists every now and then just to get my mind flowing, my mind right. Okay, yeah. Uh, who, who's your favorite R and B artist? It would have to be right now, probably since she just dropped her album, Summer Walker. Okay. Excellent. Now, uh, have you have you shared those those uh, those those songs and, and those artists with any other people? Oh yeah, of course. I got to. I got to show it off. I got to show off the music takes sometimes. Do you, Do you room with anybody on the team? Yeah, Justin and Tim. Okay, so you're showing them the ways. Of course, always. And like me and Justin listen to the same stuff. Tim does too, but me and Justin are more similar in music taste. Gotcha. Now, growing up, was there any NBA player or anything that you try to emulate as far as your game goes? Uh, Russell Westbrook. Okay, why? Because like I like to affect the game in different aspects, not just scoring or not just defense. I just like to be versatile. Have you ever asked Coach Mark Matson any stories about Russell Westbrook? No, nah, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> okay. All right. It's going to come, though. It's going to come. So far, uh, what has your experience been like at Utah Valley? It's been pretty nice. Been pretty good. Been learning a lot, building different relationships with people. So, for the most part, I, lo I love it here. And what was it like? How did you make your decision to come to Utah Valley? Who contacted you? for? What was that whole process like? Coach Madison, I just fell in love with the coaching staff. And, like, Coach Madison just brought me in. Like, even before, like, I considered coming here and stuff, and he was just calling me. He just seemed so genuine. And, like, he really – he just made me feel like he was home without me even being here. Like, I couldn't – I couldn't come – because of COVID, I couldn't come on any visit. So, mm. he made it feel like I was home already on the Zoom call. So, had you had ever heard of Coach Madison before? No, but I seen a video of him dancing <laughs> at the, on his championship uh, today. And, and and that warmed your heart as well? Definitely, definitely. I was like, okay, good guy. I need to I need him to be my coach for sure. Now have you offered to to throw in some of JB's moves to to Coach Matson's repertoire? I don't think he's ready for that yet. He's I, don't not think, <laughs> I don't think he's ready for that yet. You know what I'm saying? JV get down. JV get down on the dance floor. I don't think his I don't think his body ready for that one. maybe uh maybe in the future when another uh a conference championship comes definitely definitely though definitely so jb what what do you feel like is uh, a strength for this utah valley team right now right now i would say 
I would say the way we bond, like we we're all close together. We all gel well together and it's all going to come like the first game was a little shaky. Like we had a lot of turnovers and stuff, but I feel like as the season progresses, we'll learn from that and take away from different things that we do and just get better and better. Like what? we have, oh, I'm sorry. Go no, ahead. Go ahead. No, nah, it's fine. I was just going to, I was just going to ask you, what do you feel like your favorite aspect or your best aspect of your game is right now? Now will probably be like my voice and how vocal I am, like communicating to different people and telling people where to go. Cause that's what, that's what kind of what coach Madison wants me to do with, with me being a point guard. He wants me to direct people, uh, show my leadership. So I would say that. And do you like that leadership role? Definitely. Definitely. All right. Well, uh, JB, we know, uh, your time is limited. Thank you again for taking the time to be with us. We'll ask you this one last question. I asked the same thing to Blaze. Um, for tonight's game against Pepperdine and then later this week against Long Beach State, what do you feel like are the keys to success for this Utah Valley team? I would say limit turnovers, move the ball. We're going to have to push the ball on the break, and we should be fine. And put that ball in the basket, we should be fine. All right. Defense, okay. defense is going to come. I can't wait to see you put the defenders in the fryer in Jordan's kitchen and, and cook definitely, them up. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. All right, JB. Thanks for taking the time to be with us, brother. Yes, sir. All right, everybody. That was the Utah Valley Coaches Show. Again, thank you to, to Michael Johnson, Jason Erickson, all the staff involved. We will see you next Wednesday, uh, excuse me, next Monday here on ESPN 960. Utah Valley tips off tonight at 8 o'clock Mountain Time against Pepperdine. Take care, everybody. See you next week.